from here, what I want to do is the first one, just the ba a basic elevator. I'm going to lift Matt right up so much that I put him on, on uh, his feet behind my head and he kind of walks it out. So watch. Right up there, I spin around, Matt comes back down onto my hooks and right up over my head. Turn around. Because a lot of people with the butterfly gut, they lift their hooks like this in front of their body, like out there, and it's all about getting that person really elevated and getting underneath it. So we're going to do that. Matt walks out, turns around, I redo it, uh, and we'll continue with that. Let's do that. So I'm going to get double underhooks under, under Matt, and I'm going to rock him back in the rocking chair. Double underhooks, rock. And I put him back, and I go back down. Then when I come up the next time, I get double overhooks. What I mean by double overhooks is through here, not that. All right, so through his arms, and we rock him, and come back up. Now I go back down. Next time I come up, I get one of each. One overhook, one underhook. Rocking chair and back, and then lastly, do the other side. One underhook, one overhook, rocking chair, and then back. All right, so double unders, double overs. So, what I'm going to do, let's start, let's actually start worse. So, he's down here like this. He's down like that. Okay, so it's like, <coughs> you know, I can't, I can't move him. Because his legs are on the ground, it's hard for, him, for me to move his legs. There's too much friction there of his shin on the mat, and there's no. I've got, to, I've got to overcome the inertia, okay? So this is problematic. Butterfly guard works really well when the person's trying to drive forward and be aggressive. The more aggressive they are, the better butterfly guard works. It gets stalled out a lot in this situation when the guy's just like a lump and sitting there like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, if it's a gi, I'll grab the gi at the front. If it's not, just put your hands like that. But it's a gi tonight. We're gonna float him towards you a little bit. Just get a little bit of air, like half a mil or a millimeter air, under his shins, and then I'm going to push him back. Watch. Right? Now from here, watch what I'm going to do. Just that. From here, one there, and one there. And go back. Okay? The quick sweep. So Matt's down. Okay, first thing I'm going to float him. Boop, and then boop. And then back. Okay? So a collar tie, and when we do it, with this, when I, when I floated him back to here, my hands are here, we're just going like that. That will often stop his hand going out there better than that. So now he can put his hand out. But now he tries to put his hand out, it's really, really hard. And you want to cross his arm and his head over like that in space. Whoop, and away you go, okay, for the quick, for the quick sweep. So we're going to do what's called a reset and a quick sweep. So the reset is when, you know, nothing's happening, he's just down flat. We get him here, we float him a little bit first, shove him right back, and we freeze there. Next part will be, bang on that elbow, smack the head, cross him over, sweep him over with your right hook. Okay, thanks Matt, let's do it. So, a little basic drill is, what are we gonna do with our feet to mess him up? Just like a jab, like a boxer would go, jab, 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 jab. Something to mess the person up. What we're gonna do is use this part of our hook, all right, to push his legs. Okay, can you see see that? So I've got Matt's arms, so they're kind of out of the out of the picture there. But watch as he's moving around. Then I can sweep him. So I'm just going to keep pushing the legs because what I want you to do when my right foot sweeping with the hook like this. Okay, that's lifting. It's kind of obvious. Look at the left foot. You watch, 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 Matt. Matt's knee here, watch. You see what happened? I push it back, which meant his hips start to fall, which meant his weight went right, which meant the left side of his body gets light. See that? So that's a really important aspect of the hook swing. This is what I just did there to his leg. All right, so we practice this little drill law. I mean, on my, on my body like this. We're gonna grab the arm, much like the, you know, the quick, quick swing, but instead of that, that. Difference, and I move my hip like a trapdoor to there. See that? My hip like a trapdoor, meaning that it goes from horizontal to vertical. Watch, and dump it there. See what I just did? Like that. Okay. My right leg has to be soft. If my right leg's hard, you'll move your hip out, but your hip, your belly will stay flat. So my right leg goes soft. See, and we'll dump him down the mat. So I'm going to go grab, and then underhook. And now move my hip back. Like that. Okay. So we're going to trap door him down, grab his back, unhook his arm, and now we go back. One, 
two, three. And that, at that point, he'll be falling down there and just a little kick he'll get fall. Okay, let's try that quickly. So, um, let's look now at a couple of things. Let's do a really easy uh, hook sweep. And you can do it from here. I've got hold of this arm. I'm just going to get simple. The simplest way I ever learned this was this. Two hands on here, foot on the hip, pull it across, hook sweeping. Okay. If you get two hands on this arm, and you get that arm over here, across your center line, see like it is now? Then now, when I take my foot off, you see? Why is my foot here so I can pull hard? Now when I take that foot off there, what have I done? I've killed his arm, now, or, you know, whatever, okay? So you see, so number one, remember we used to call that spin the pig? We used to call it spin the pig. From here, foot in the hip, you got the, the control of this here. Pull it across, grab his belt, get the underhook, float him, take him over here. Okay, two hands on that one. I get double unders, and I lock my hands. Okay, I mess him up, and then, oh, look, Superman. <laughs> like that. It's funny. <laughs> see, see, when you have double overs, it's, it's kind of obvious you're not letting his arm goes out, but double unders, he feels pretty safe because he feels that his arms can, can post out there, which they can. So I just go release and do that. Now put your arms out. See, see like that? Superman sweep. Start with double unders. Gable grip. And you can have a rest. He's trying to get away. Just keep messing around, messing him around, messing him around. Oh. See, I shifted to from here to here on his head. Now he's like Superman. Roll. Any, any side you want. Go on top. So I've got Callum here, I've got a half gun. He's gonna grab me there and he's locked his hands, he's got me he's flattened out here. So he's push squashed me good. So he squashed me down like that. Okay, I'm gonna sweep him from here. So look, the first thing we're gonna do, our feet are gonna go on the inside. Okay? They may be on the outside, they might be on the inside, but wherever they are. I want you to put them both on the inside like that, on the inside of his feet. See that? Okay, watch my right foot. So now I can move my right foot and do what I want. I still got Callum's leg, agree? But if they're on the outside, I couldn't do anything because he'd be out. So feet inside, so my left leg's trapping him. Now, see my foot on top here? We're gonna get that, see I've got to feel with the sole of my foot and push his ankle down like that to the ground, his uh, heel down. See what I did? Push it down. Look what that did to the knee here. See it? Took it off the ground a little bit. I'm gonna push this down. I'm gonna put my foot on the ground. See my left foot on the ground? Now, I imagine like I'm a clock. I'm just gonna turn the clock that way, look. Now he's on my hook. Now he tries to get off my hook. Now he's on two hooks. But now, does his underhook help him? Now his underhook's a liability. It's gone from being an asset when he was in my half guard, his underhook was an asset. Once he's on my hooks, so this goes to basic strategy in jiu-jitsu. If you have a bad position, right, if I've got a guard, if I've got a guard and I have not got the hand positions I want, change guards. Because it's very likely that when you change guards, you might have the hand positions you want for that guard. Whoever has the hand position for the right guard wins. The way we used to learn to do this was like this. We used to play paper, rock, scissors. We go paper, rock, scissors. Oh, I'm going to do half guard. It's going to be half guard every time. So one, two, three. So I did Jedi mind trick. I win. So therefore, he gets in my guard and I get the underhook. And if we all did that as a class and did it for half an hour, or if he wins, he gets the underhook. If we all did that, it would soon become apparent whoever wins this game gets to sweep or pass. Of course, that's crazy, right? Because nothing to do with it, but whoever's got the underhook. If he's got the underhook on top, he gets to start the pass. If I've got it from the bottom, I get to start to go under him and sweep. So it will become apparent to you, hand position means everything. So you want to ask yourself, well, what hand position would you like if you're on my hooks guard? What would I like? What would you like? Different things. What about close guard? What would I want? What would you want? Different things. Whoever wins the hand position generally me, uh, is, is ready to move forward with their strategy, okay? You have to trust me on that. So now, if I've not won it, so I'm in the half guard, 
and I haven't got the good, he's got it. What do I do? I change guards. By changing guards, it changes the whole game. See, so that's what we're doing. So we've got the half guard here, he's got me flat there. Oh, he nearly, he, <laughs> you see, he nearly gave me the underhook. That was so funny. All right, so from here now, my feet inside. We use our foot to pull his foot down. We put our other foot on the mat near our butt. Now, sometimes if he's taller than you, you can just stick this foot under his leg because there'll be a lot of space. But that's why I picked Callum um, to demonstrate the mo more difficult. Now, what I'm gonna do is the inside of my right thigh, see this leg I'm shaking? I'm gonna turn that leg around. See what I did? I bumped him onto my hook, all right? Now, if he doesn't do anything, I will lift him up with that hook and my right hand and dump him onto two. Now he's on two hooks. That arm is not helping him. He can't post. You see what I did? Normally though, you don't have to bump him up because normally when you get that hook in, he goes crazy trying to get off it. Right, so once I normally bump him onto that hook, he goes to try to get off it, makes all this space, I lift him up, put my other hook. Now I've got two hooks and an over hook. The whole game changed. Got what I'm saying? All right. So there's a few ways to do this. The way I actually first learned it was a little different, was trap the foot, stretch it out, hold it, stick this in. But it's much easier just to pull his foot down, put this foot there, now look. See what, I, I just rotate like that, and the inside of that, this leg doesn't move, look. So you see what happened? If this leg was there, and I rotated that way, his foot must be over my hook. Now I stick it, because you've all got a sticky hook, right? And then we lift him up, put him on two hooks, and then we flip him. So when I say pivot, your left foot doesn't move. Everything moves, but your left foot doesn't move. You nail it to the floor, and then you'll, you'll push him onto it. And then he's on your hook, and you can, that's a whole different thing. Okay, cool? Really tight, like that one, right? I mean, that was not just tight, it was, it was a bad scene. Like, I was down, he had the hand hook, he had me squashed. That was, then we had somewhere he was in the middle with his hands here, and we dumped it. And then we had somewhere he was kind of here, but we had a hold of his sleeve. Okay, now we're back here, all right? And I'm here, and he pushed my head. Now I've got him. Okay. So when he pushes my head, I take it off. It's like a telescope, telescope grip. Okay. After you do the telescope grip three times, you're going to uppercut. What does he want? He wants his hand back. Punch it in his gut okay, and grip my wrist. Look. Punch it, grip it. See, I've got a grip. That's called the lock Russian tie. So you have a grip there. Grab like my wrist. Now what that does is not going to sweep down, but I'll guarantee he's going to go wherever I go. It's so locked in here like it's barn dancing. <laughs> that. So when I fall back, he can try to stay back up there, but he's going to come with me. Whoa! Now I'm going to kick him back. What did I just do by when I reset him? His head changed level. <laughs> At this point, he can't get away. I've got his arm and his head, meaning I've got him. Okay, and then we're gonna sweep him. Look, sweep. Super easy. So good, well connected there, okay? So again, there's a little bit more to this. This is quite advanced, but let's do all these points. This was Hegan Machado's favorite technique last year. Fall of last year, every world champion that walked into his school, he did this tour in 25.